This is my daughter's 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. <clears throat> she was driving it last night and she called me and said that she was having some trouble. So I went over to get her in the car and see what was going on. Um, ended up with a tow home. Uh, the story as it goes, as she told me, she pulled out of a fast food joint onto a main road and basically lost power steering and uh, so she pulled into a service station very close to by where she had pulled out and she said when she stopped it she got out and there was fluid on the ground so she went back in she turned off she turned off the uh, car and right when she turned off the car she heard a noise and then large amounts of fluid began to leak out she popped the hood I got there and evaluated it, and this is what we found. Her radiator ruptured right here. Now, apparently, from the rust stains, I'm gonna guess and predict that in fact it's been leaking for a time. And uh, she has had to add fluid to her, uh, her fluid reservoir. So apparently, this has been leaking for a time. What caused power steering fluid to go out <clears throat> was the serpentine belt, which came off. So why did the serpentine belt come off, break? Could be just a, it's an old serpentine belt, that's an option. Uh, but as it turns out, in fact, it's this idler pulley will not turn a lick. So we have issues with serpentine belt, we have issues with idler pulley, we have issues with the coolant system. Hopefully, and I don't think it's a problem, but hopefully we did not overheat um, when the serpentine belt came off of course the also meant that the uh, <clears throat> that the uh, water pump also laid down and uh, quit working so um, but it was just very quickly uh, after um, the belt went that she was able to shut the thing down because she noted the power steering was out so here we go we're going to replace the uh, two coolant hoses, they've got they're pretty much original as far as we know, 250,000 miles. So we're going to replace those, we're going to replace the radiator, we're going to replace the idler pulley here, which will not turn at all, and we're going to replace the serpentine belt. We're going to break this into a couple of videos, uh, one on the radiator and coolant system, one on the serpentine belt and idler pulley. And uh, that's what we're going to do. Now to go get some parts. All right, well, we're going to start on the radiator on this 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee uh, Laredo 4 4 liter motor. Uh, if you saw from the beginning, uh, we obviously have some serious failure of the radiator here. And so, to begin with, uh, we're going to pull the shroud away from the radiator. There's four bolts in the shroud. I believe they're 10 millimeter. We'll confirm that. We're going to pull those away. We're also going to pull the cross support here above the radiator so we can get to the AC core and also so we can move the radiator back a bit. We need to move the radiator back in order to get to these transmission fluid coolant lines which uh, tie in down there by the uh, by the steering box. So they are not easy to get to with that steering box via there. Uh, we have pulled the upper and lower hoses, drained the system, all that's ready to go. So here pretty quick we're going to go ahead and get started. Start pulling apart these pieces. Let me talk to you a little bit. Well, let's just do the overflow hose while we're standing here. So the overflow hose is out and uh, goes to the overflow reservoir. Um, what we've, we did some serious investigation on the front end of this thing to figure out what to take off to get to the radiator. Look, you can make this as hard or easy as you want. And so we were trying to keep it easy but doable. This particular radiator, the where the AC uh, condenser core is uh, bolted on, it only has two bolts and they're fairly high up. So I think we can fairly easily get those. At the bottom, it actually clips onto the radiator. So we don't have bolts down there at the bottom. So what we've done is uh, we've pulled four bolts that hold uh, this front grill assembly on, right there, and all the way along. And now we're going to, uh, and we've pulled the four bolts that hold this cross bracket on two on the side and then we've taken off 
two 13 millimeter nuts that hold the hood latch assembly on. And now we're going to first step, unless it gets out of the way, get rid of that molding, it's in the way. Uh, so the first step is we're actually going to remove this bracket. And what you have to do is you just have to work it behind uh, these these brackets. And you just work your way along. There's another bracket right there. Pull it back just like that. So we work our way along and hopefully we'll be able to get this thing out. I did disconnect the one bolt in the headlights so that that wasn't limiting us. And uh, so we gotta pull this one back and lift up on that. And then there's only one remaining. And we're gonna lift up on that. So that's out of the way. Suddenly you can see a lot more of what's going on. We can now get in here fairly easily. Here's the mounting bolts for the radiator. Here's the mounting bolts for the AC core. And so we're gonna take those apart, pull the AC core forward in hopes that we can pull the radiator forward and disengage it from the shroud and also get to those transmission fluid coolant lines and hopefully we're there. Um, one note on this radiator, um, on this particular fan shroud, I expected to find where the wiring is here on the fan shroud right there. I expected to find a plug. There's no plug. They're connected together. Uh, looks like a hard connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just leave the shroud in for now. Try to work around it. I think that's doable. Yours might have a plug. If it does, I'd certainly suggest you disconnect the negative battery terminal. Disconnect this plug. Lift the shroud up out of your way. Uh, doesn't look like that's our case. I don't know if somebody did a replacement uh, or if that's just the way they come stock. You guys can let me know what you see on yours. But uh, I actually got another one over there. I could open the hood and see. There's another. There's a 2000 over there, but same motor. Anyway, so we're going to get on with this thing and then we'll get right back with it. Well, we're back to this job. Um, you can see we got the radiator. We took out the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the air conditioning uh, condenser coil on. They removed the two 10 millimeter bolts that actually hold the radiator to the frame right there where that rubber grommet is. And then we took off the 10 millimeter bolts that hold the shroud onto onto the radiator there's one there now in this case as i told you it looked like this was an aftermarket replacement um, this bolt here which holds the shroud was not even there they didn't put it in so it's a tight one anyway and then of course this bolt is out so uh pulled the shroud back and because we didn't have a factory plug on the shroud we just decided we disconnected the negative battery table terminal and cut these two wires and now I'm going to put some uh, put some connected fittings back on there so it can be connected and re unconnected disconnected and reconnected so fix that up so it'll be easier later um, so where are we at now these air these transmission fluid coolant lines as we turn these nuts these threads are turning basically uh, spinning the fitting in the radiator that's the case for both so we're going to try one of two approaches we're either going to disconnect the transmission fluid lines here at the base of these metal fitting these metal pipes or what we're actually going to try first we're going to get a chisel and we're going to break the radiator here so that this fitting comes out of the radiator and then we can grab the back side with a set of channel locks i think that's the best approach whether we take it out or leave it in we're going to have to break this fitting out of the radiator and with the condition of this radiator uh, we're not going to hurt anything so let's see if we can do that so back to the radiator replacement, you can see how we've got all the radiator pulled out. As a matter of fact, in a separate video, we've placed the serpentine belt, either pulley, tensioner pulley, all those goodies. You'll see a couple of hoses right down here. These are the transmission line hoses. We ended up disconnecting the transmission coolant hoses from the metal pieces, these metal pieces right here, that were on the radiator. Um, because it simply wouldn't come out. The whole fitting was trying to come out of the side of the um, of the radiator, which was saying you want to twist that metal tubing. So what did we end up doing? Well, we ended up basically ripping the side tank off of the radiator. Who cares? We're replacing the radiator. No big deal. But it wasn't trivial. We had to bend all these little aluminum tabs up. 
and then ultimately we're able to pull off this side tank. The side tank, just so you can see, has a transmission cooler here, and then your fittings. Here's one fitting here, and here's where the other fitting was previously. So ultimately we got this one to come loose. Uh, this one on the other end never did come loose. We ended up having to take it all the way out of the cooler, take it to the vise, put the bottom of that fitting in the vise, and then loosen the uh, aluminum tubing off of it. A real pain, but look, who cares, right? You're getting rid of the radiator anyway. I'm really not sweating it, but it was just a pain to do. So we're going to install the radiator. We're going to put those aluminum fittings back on. Once they're all fitted and sorted, we're going to go in. We'll hook those two hoses back up to the bottom. Uh, another thing we did, you know, is the shrouds out. We went ahead and cut the shroud wiring, and we actually put in some spade connectors. Um, this uh, one of them is a spade, and the other one receives the spade. And so we've got them keyed correctly. So we go back in, we can just uh, clip that, put that fan plug back in there. And uh, yeah, it's not the factory plug, but it'll work. And so the shrouds, well, very bright. The shroud sitting right there. So we'll get that back on. So here we go. We're going to start the reinstall. Be sure and check your radiator and see if it came with these clips. Um, there's two on this side. This is the front side. And then there's four on the back side. And, uh, so be sure if your radiator doesn't come with clips, if you transfer them from your old radiator to your new one. Well, got a bit further on the radiator installed than I wanted to before I got back with you, but let's go through it. Um, basically, when you drop the radiator in, you need to pull the air conditioner uh, condensing coil as far ahead as possible. But you also have to pull it up. Um, it has to come up. In order for me to get it up, I actually had to unhook the pressure sensor right down there um, on the AC line if I can find it yes yeah, right there I had to actually hook that so I could pull uh, I already had the uh, negative battery terminal disconnected so I could pull up this uh, condenser core down there and then basically once the condenser core is up high enough now the radiator gives in fairly easily a little bit of wiggling and jiggling it's a tight space but it'll go in once the radiator's in re-secure realign the AC condensing coil to the bottom of the radiator right here there's a clip and so this tab on the condensing core uh, condenser goes into there and then that bolt that you see right there uh, you can install it uh, into the radiator and do that on both sides and then what we did was we went ahead and installed the radiator mounting bolts there's one on each side and one thing to note, our radiator, and you may find this situation in your case, our radiator stood up too tall. Uh, it's about a quarter inch too tall, which meant that that bolt, as just showed you, the bolt back there, would not line up. So we checked it and all the foot, the rubber feet that go down into the frame, they were different sizes. So we switched our old rubber feet out for our new ones and it went in there and lined up just fine. So once the radiator was installed, then we put the shroud down in I actually went and got some spade connectors you see there I got some spade connectors for hooking that up so it can come off and on next time if there is a next time quite easily and then hooked all that back together uh, put new hoses upper as well as the lower hose is down in there and I put new upper and lower radiator hoses hooked it all up closed the petcock on the bottom filled it up Got a new radiator cap. I particularly like these because you can release pressure with them and uh, they're nicer to deal with in my book. Uh, we recharged it, fired it up. Well, hooked up the negative battery terminal, but fired it up and uh, got it up to temperature. Ran great. So we're hoping that all is well. We're going to keep an eye on it for leaks over the next few days and uh, hopefully it's all good. We did reinstall, as you can see, the uh, top bracket the hood closure and then we put the bolts back in the front grill so we had taken them out earlier to see about possibly removing the front grill that didn't work out nearly as good as we hoped 
So these bolts are in, uh, the two bolts holding the bracket on both sides are in, headlights are in. So we're good, we're gonna give it a go and see what happens, I hope. If you have any questions, you'll give me a shout. Um, it's a job, it's not a little job. So take care when you take it on, bye.